This video is going to be a, just another example of using variables, using the cells, objects to access your sheet, using input box, a little calculation, and so on. Um, I have a macro on this sheet, uh, on, in this workbook, and uh, let's just click on the uh, Visual Basic here, and we'll see that there is indeed a macro. There's a macro called 1, and it has a lot of code. I'll come back and talk about this code in just a minute, but before that, I want to go back to my sheet. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a button on my sheet here so that I can run my macro and see what it does. So I go to the insert option here on the developer ribbon and I go to form controls, pick the very top left form control which is a button, come down to my sheet and drag my button out and it asks me which macro do I want to run and I only have the one macro here so I'll just pick uh, macro number one and I'll click OK and now it's ready to uh, essentially run that macro but before I do so I think I'd like to change the format and the name of my button here so I'm gonna right click on my button I'm gonna say uh, edit the text and now I'm in this text editing mode and I'm gonna just call this uh, run uh, macro one so that's what it'll do and if I actually select this text with my mouse here uh, I ought to be able to format that text now, so I'll right click and say format that control and I'll come in, maybe make it a 14 point font, make it bold, change the color to, I don't know, you know, change it to some, some other strange color just to see if that works for you. And uh, you could change the font to some sort of strange font if you wanted to and click OK. And so now if I uh, click back up here in the top left corner, it says run macro 1, and uh, it'll actually run the macro. But before we run it, let's go ahead and take a look at the code. The very first thing you'll notice in this code block, and this is very typical of many code blocks, is you've got a series of dim statements that are declaring variables to reserve memory to store things in. So I have a long variable here that's called miles driven. That'll store a number. I have gallons, which also is a long, that stores a number. Name is going to be a string. Prompt is also a string. And MPG is a number also, but it's a double notice. This would allow me to store a fractional value, not just a whole number. Longs only hold whole numbers. Double will hold a fractional decimal value. So the first thing I do is I have an assignment statement that will assign to my prompt variable this string. And this is just a literal string. You'll notice here between the quote marks. I then have an assignment statement that will assign to the name variable what the user is going to type at the input box. Now notice the argument or the item I gave to the input box to display for the prompt is my variable. So it's going to look this variable up in memory and it's going to find this string and it will display that string on the computer screen. So it should ask the user what their name is. The next thing I do is another assignment. It will grab the values, for the value from cells 8, 2. That's row 8, column 2 and it'll store that value into this variable called gallons. Here's another variable, miles driven, and it, its value is in cells 8, comma 1, row 8, column 1, and it'll grab the value from the sheet and put it into that variable. And finally, we have another assignment here that calculates the MPG by taking miles driven and divides it by the gallons that, of fuel that were used. And then finally, the last thing we want to see is the result of all this, and so on our sheet in cells 8, 1, we're going to store all of this information you see here. So it retrieves the user's name, glues onto that the string your car went, glues onto that the miles driven, glues onto that the string miles on, and notice the underscore here, the space underscore at the end of this line. That's a line continuation that allows me to continue this line down on the next line. I have my ampersand to glue on the number of gallons the user purchased, and then another string, gallons of fuel, that is, and then the MPG calculation is stored in that variable, and we glue on the end of our string here that says miles per gallon. Again, notice at the end of this line, we also had to have the line continuation. That's the space underscore. 
Well, all of that, of course, is being put onto the spreadsheet in cells 8, 3. So the output's on the sheet. I'm not going to see any output just flashed up on the screen in a message box. I have to go look at the sheet and see what the output's going to be. Well, since we have a button on our sheet, we ought to be able to just look at the sheet uh, and click the button to run it. And when the program runs, then uh, we can see the output immediately. Now, you notice the output's already here, so I'm going to have to delete that. But I wanted to run the program, of course, to make sure that it worked. You want to run your programs to make sure they work before you show them off, right? Well, maybe I shouldn't have. I could have left a bug in it, and we could do some debugging. So when we run this program, of course, it's going to grab these values off the sheet. But first, remember, it's going to ask me for my name, because that's the first thing that the program actually does when it runs. It prompts the user for their name. So uh, we go ahead and type in the name. Click OK. Now remember what it's going to do after it types the name. It's going to grab the values, calculate the MPG, and then take all that information and stick it on the sheet. So as soon as we click OK, we should see all that information just appear on the sheet in row 8, column 3. That would be C8. And there it is immediately. Bam! Just like that. So here it went, and here it, here it is. You know, Peter went 550 miles on 10 gallons, and it grabbed those values and then calculated the MPG to get the 55 miles per gallon and put it on the sheet. And you can see it's in that particular cell. So again, you need to, you know, you really need to study this macro. If you have any questions about this macro whatsoever, you need to send me an email, ask me about it, post it up in the VB, um, in the Blackboard forums under VB if you have questions. Because if you're in the classroom, of course, you get to ask questions and everybody in the uh, room hears your answer. So that's a nice place to ask questions. So I'd really appreciate it if you'd do that. Otherwise, thank you very much. And uh, type this thing in and give it a try.